Hi everyone and welcome to the second installment of the uh, Blogging in Canberra chat. Uh, I am James and I am a tweet at Tweet Camera and I also blog at Raising3Daughters.com. Uh, tonight I've got some great guests lined up and if throughout the chat if you want to ask them any questions, jump on Twitter and use the hashtag CBRChat. Uh, the reason I've used CBR chat is because eventually we're going to run out of bloggers here in Canberra and I don't think we'll ever run out of stuff to talk about what's going on in Canberra. So that's sort of like a, a future direction that we can take things. Uh, all right, so let's crack on with the guests tonight. So first of all, I'm going to talk to uh, Tara from In the Territory. How are you going, Tara? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. So Tara, obviously you blog at, at In the Territory and you're also at in underscore the underscore territory on Twitter. So apart from being an also a shopping trolley activist around the Belconnen area... I'm uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Blog. Sorry, say that again. Tell us a little bit about your blog. Uh, so mm -hmm. I started blogging in, I think, August 2011. Uh, and it was largely because my um, former housemate, who was also called Tara, uh, and I both agreed that... Uh, there wasn't enough about Canberra and all of the interesting things we were doing in Canberra and, and that people should start writing about it. And sure. uh, since we started, um, it's grown and grown. She dropped off uh, at the beginning of last year, so about after 18 months, um, and gave me full reign, which was lovely of her. She didn't have to do that. Uh, and since then, I've been a solo blogger, but um, built up a Twitter profile. I feel like I'm a bit of a... Belconnen activist sometimes, uh, and I think the I think the best way to put it is a shopping trolley activist. Mm, not just shopping trolleys, but uh, <laughs> today certainly, and the last few weeks certainly, uh, and the blogs simply about um, things to do in Canberra, whether it's um, food or wine or experiences or um, walks. Uh, or any random event that's on, I'm usually there. Yeah, awesome. I, and you certainly build up quite a, quite the following on Twitter. Um, and you know, you've got uh, I don't know how many Twitter followers you got at the moment, but uh, certainly a lot of stuff that you do around Canberra, you push it out, and a lot of people take uh, or certainly ask you for advice what's going on around Canberra. Yeah, and that's lovely. It's it's something I never really expected for people to take my opinion seriously. Um, but <laughs> it it's lovely when you get that sort of feedback. Oh, great. All right, so uh, our ne next guest we've got is uh, Vanessa. So, Vanessa, you just recently started a new blog. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, I've been blogging for a long time. I've been blogging since before the word blog existed, I think. I'm that old. Um, and I've written a lot of blogs about a lot of different things, but um, just in the last year or so, I've been really um, inspired by all the great bloggers in Canberra, and um, I started a new personal blog this year, and some of the posts I enjoy writing the most are about what my kids and I have been doing in and around Canberra and so I've just started Canberra 101 um, as a way to share what we're, we get up to. I think there's sort of a bit of a, um, a gap in the market for a family blog about you know, family life in Canberra so um, I've just started this week and um, we'll see where it takes us. I'm certainly interested to see where it goes because I actually have three daughters myself and my blog Raising Three Daughters, I, I struggle sometimes with um, writing, you know, like dad posts because I, you know, I live a boring lifestyle with three daughters. I don't venture out that much. Then, um, so you're, I'm watching yours with great interest. Actually, I, I can't wait to see what you put up. Thanks. I think it's really good for me. Um, it sort of forces us to get out of the house. I grew up in Canberra, but um, I think I mentioned to Tara one day on Twitter that I think she's done more things in six years than I've done in the forty odd years that I've lived here. So, um, you know, she sort of inspired me to get out and about more with my kids and discover more about Canberra, so that's been great. Yeah, it's a great city to do that sort of stuff. And and leading into that, Rosemary, uh, a ring-in. Uh, you're in Malaysia at the moment, but you're moving to Canberra. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, we actually just moved to Malaysia from Singapore, and we've been here for a few months. And during that time, we got our visa grants granted to us, and we made a short trip to Canberra in October, and we fell in love with the place. It's nothing like Malaysia, and uh, nothing like Singapore, actually. And uh, we're looking forward to coming there. We're arriving on April 28th. Awesome. Awesome. And 
you know, something that I do, like I, before I do these chats, I sort of go around and check out all your blogs and just sort of scope out the company that I'm in. Rosemary, your blog's been featured on like National Geographic and CNN and like the Jakarta Post. Now, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, in the blogging community, if your um, article or post is featured by the National Geographic um, uh, section where they call the radar, have you heard of that? No, if, I haven't. If it's featured on their radar, um, you're basically featured by them. And this is how most of the bloggers in the blogging community that I'm in uh, online um, say that they are featured on National Geographic. It's just something that I just learned. <laughs> so oh, okay. Yeah, so you're allowed to put the, um, um, the logo on your blog to say that you've been featured there because it takes a lot of effort to get featured by uh, National Geographic. You have to tweet the hashtag NGR, uh, NGT radar, and they will pick you if they think your article is good enough. So you can tweet it for a year and not get seen. I did that. <laughs> I finally got seen just a few months ago. Oh, congratulations. That's really good. And it certainly yeah. helps you, um, you know, like shows that your efforts are paying off in that sense that, you know, you're sort of getting some recognition for all the writing and all the efforts that you're putting into it. Yes. And, and with the Jakarta post, uh, when we were living in Indonesia, um, I had opened a, a blog about everything and anything. I even wrote about recipes and my opinions and things like that. And yep. uh, I just contacted the Jakarta Post and said, you know, would you like to um, have a contributor, contribute articles about Indonesia? And they said yes. But yep. it doesn't happen all the time. It depends on the mood of the editor. Oh, awesome. Well, I mean, we'll move on. And, and Rachi, you know, one of Canberra's favorite bakers, I guess. Um, you know, you've, you've been know all around the spot. You've been, you know, on Triple Six Canberra talking about your, your sort of side project that you started at Cape Club. You know, but tell us a little bit more about your blog and sort of how that's led into the Cape Club and, and, and what you do around Canberra. Um, so I call myself my blog a lifestyle blog. So it is mainly food focused, but I write about a lot of other things as well. So um, just things that happen in Canberra, sort of um, food and wine events. Um, also just random things in my life as well. I write about books I read, I write about places I go to, I, yeah, about holidays, travel, pretty much anything and everything. So, um, but it is mainly Canberra driven and mainly food and wine driven as well. Um, so the Cake Club came about, just a couple of bloggers just um, met up for a drink late last year and um, we had a blogger from Perth who was there and she was talking about the Perth Cake Club and then three of us decided um, we'll open up a Canberra Bake Club, Cake Club. So, um, that's how that came about. And how's that going? It's going really well. Um, we you know, didn't expect it to be so popular and so many people to be interested, but um, we've just been really overwhelmed. It's fantastic. I mean, yeah, apparently there was a huge need for a cake club here. So, um, yeah, I know it's fantastic. We've had two cake clubs. Um, third one is coming up in uh, it's next weekend. So, um, yeah, we announce spots and they get taken within an hour. So um, it's a popular little thing. That's pretty impressive. It's pretty yeah. impressive. Jamie, I don't know if you can. How's your microphone going? I've tried a couple of settings. Have we got anything? Yeah, yeah. there we go. It's working now, mate. How are you going? There we go. Perfect. Very well, thank you, James. Very well. Uh, it's great to have you here, mate. So, what? I mean, I'm not sure if you've got a personal blog as well, but you know, sort of uh, content type creation, and and you're the uh, senior comms coordinator at Coordinate Group here in uh, Canberra. Tell us a little bit about that. Correct. So I blog for work and I blog for play. Um, they're both very nerdy blogs. So uh, you know, hopefully you guys are interested in what they are. But I'm happy to talk through both of them. Would you like the work one or the play one first? Oh, whichever, whichever one, mate. You tell us a little bit about both of them if you like. Sure thing. So I mean, my role at Content Group is the head of uh, all of our internal publishing, basically. So we do a lot of writing about different talk types of communications, whether it's social media, whether it's content marketing, whether it's video, whether it's podcasting, these sorts of things. Uh, we do a lot of writing about that to try and help our users in their everyday lives, basically. Um, so a lot of that is um, published from you know within our internal people, but I also do a bit of writing myself. Uh, so I, I run a couple of social media courses. So most of my stuff is nerdy stuff about Google Analytics and Google Plus and Facebook Analytics and these sorts of things. 
you know, different things that I enjoy, but also things that some people might use in their everyday work as well. So hopefully we can we can help them out there. Now my other one is even nerdier than that. So I run a, a fantasy rugby league website as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's basically played by you know a couple of thousand people around Australia. And within that, we sort of publish our own content as well, talking about the different games, talking about what's happening each week, who's playing well, who's playing badly. Uh, so I've got a team of seven writers on that, uh, and so including myself, and we basically publish as much content as we can. And the types of people that we're talking to love their rugby league, love their sport, love their fantasy rugby league, and yeah. basically want to read as much as they can get involved in. So uh, that's the pet one. Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty much blogging all day, every day, from when I get in there and work in the morning to when I get home. Well, that's all, that's awesome. Um, and, and, you know, I sort of I watch a lot of the stuff that comes out from the content group on Twitter, and it's, a re it's really good stuff. So, you know, um, you know, well done on that. And it's, it's good that you're sharing that sort of information with a lot of other people that, that you know, there's so much out there and the Internet's such a, uh, a, a zoo to find out, you know, good quality information. So it's good to see that you guys are pushing out good quality information for the public. Yeah, thanks, James. Appreciate it. No worries. And and Gary, do I call you Dr. Gary? I know you've got a couple of aliases, mate. So, um, oh, don't you know, forget Dr. Roffle. Sorry. Don't forget Dr. Roffle. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> you've got a couple of aliases on Twitter, and um, you know you've got a couple of blogs as well. So, uh, I think most of the time we would see the the yummy lummy one that you keep putting up, such delicious lo looking food. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, thanks, James. Uh, I started around 2000, late 2010 after I started playing around with Twitter and a few other things on social media and I just saw blogging as a, uh, a bit of an extension of that. Uh, Yummy Lummy is basically about food, so it's whether I go to a restaurant with friends or with uh, family or whether uh, I cook something and I think it's worthwhile either writing up as a recipe or, uh, or just you know, saying something about it in general. Um, I spend a lot of my time on Instagram and Twitter just posting photos of things and usually I do a morning walk around Belconnen and uh, the owl statue is mine. So on Foursquare, no one touch it because that's mine. <laughs> um, you can have the, it. Um, the <laughs> other blog, I actually won a $50 gift voucher from 2CC for the uh, for the owl statue as the best public art in, in, in Canberra so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, uh, the other one, uh, that's on GaryDavidLum.com, uh, that's really, there's not much there, that's just the stuff that I post about uh, medical or health things that I feel comfortable doing without uh, breaching any of the code of conduct for Australian government or ACT government. I spend four days a week with the Australian government, I'm now a, uh, a medical advisor, I used to be an assistant secretary. Um, in the Department of Health, but I revised my role and, and became an advisor, and that allowed me to do one day a week at the Canberra Hospital working in pathology. So I'm just conscious that anything I write, I have to be careful about the code of conduct. So yeah. uh, that, that other blog is uh, just things that I can rant about, uh, health or medical wise, that I feel safe doing. Uh, and on Yummy Lummy, occasionally, occasionally there'll be a rant about something. Um, on Twitter, it's uh, mostly about food, but uh, depending on how I feel, you'll also see a lot of Star Trek stuff because uh, I grew up watching Star Trek and uh, I spent a lot of time uh, watching that. So that's, that's awesome. really about it. That's all, and, and you take some great photos, uh, and every time I see them, I just feel hungry. So <laughs> I don't know if that's what you're trying to achieve, but if it is, you, I'm certainly you're certainly nailing it. Excellent, thanks. I mean, uh, being uh, a background in, in health and science, I'm a bit of a, uh, a techo nerdy sort, so uh, photography is one of those things that you can express yourself. And I, when I was uh, based in Darwin, I used to spend one day a week uh, doing rounds of a lot of the patients, and I ended up being a bit of a clinical photographer as well. I, I dare not show any of the photographs I took there, because as an infectious diseases person, uh, and Darwin being in the tropics, there was lots of fantastic stuff to see. Yeah, you can keep those ones, mate, I think. And uh, and Daniel, last but not least, you, well, mate, when, when you tweeted me, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. And then I looked at Ozdroid and I was like, 
Yeah, all right, definitely. Yeah, come on, mate. So um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about Ausdroid. Um, well, we're basically the um, largest Australian Android news site. Um, we focus on Android, which is basically just a mobile operating system that's put out by Google. Um, runs on all your phones, tablets, and stuff like that. Uh, we've recently moved into things like Chrome OS, um, and we basically just report on things that are happening with Android and in product releases, applications, software, all that sort of stuff um, in Australia. Um, we do cover a bit of worldwide stuff. We've sort of hit a big on the worldwide stage a few times um, with scoops we've got. Um, we sort of also cover things like telecoms and stuff like carrier-based information in Canberra, um, Australia, different cities and stuff like that. So, yeah, we're basically trying our best and seeing what we can do. Yeah, and you're certainly doing a good job of that. I, I switched from uh, our iPhone to Android about two years ago, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. We love having iOS users come over. <laughs> yeah, so, no, that's awesome. And thanks, guys, for sharing a little bit about your blog. So it sort of just gives our viewers a little bit of understanding about uh, where you come from. Uh, because last week we had someone from Germany um, join in and ask some questions on Twitter. I've also, also already got a couple of questions here, so we'll crack on to those later on. Uh, but first off, I think, you know, it's really important to... Uh, let's let's a quick, have a quick chat about what's happened around Canberra recently. Um you know, with Enlighten happening and then also the, the Balloon Spectacular. Um, I know, you know, Tara, you got to go and check out Enlighten before any of us did. So, you know, how about you tell us a little bit about what, like, you, you've obviously seen, seen a couple of them. How do you, how did this one weigh up to the uh, the last few? Uh, I really liked it. I, I think it's great every time. Um, I think that... It seemed like there were fewer projections than last year. I don't know if it was a centenary thing or if it's just my perception or if anyone else has that uh, opinion. I think it's just a big draw card into Canberra. I'm a bit... Uh, my perception of Canberra last week is a bit skewed for two reasons. One, because I was so focused on my partner's missing brother, but also because my parents were in town at the same time and I was showing them around to all different things and. And every day they were like, wow, there's so much to do in Canberra. And, and they were absolutely stoked with Enlighten. And to be fair, they're small town central Queensland people. Um, but I think it's got something for everyone. And it's great to see national institutions looking so, I guess, looking even more beautiful than they normally do. Yeah, I, and I have to echo that. A relative of mine was in town um, for some training and she, she's like, oh, you know, I've been to Canberra so many times. It's boring. You know, it's nothing. It's Canberra. And I said, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'll blow your socks off, all right? So, you know, Friday night, I took her down to Enlighten. She was walking around stunned, like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And then Saturday, followed it up with the Balloon Spectacular. And mm. she's just, oh, oh, my God, I love Canberra now. I can't get enough of it. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, so, um, I mean, anyone else want to jump in on that one? I know, Rachi, you do a fair bit around town. Um, obviously, you know, Rosemary, you're uh, a few thousand kilometres away, so you probably, you would have seen some of the pictures. So what did you think of that coming from? Malaysia, seeing the pictures that we've all been tweeting. Well, actually, um, I'm really amazed that you have something going on practically every month. That doesn't really happen everywhere else. And it's something really to look forward to. I've been missing a lot. I know I'm arriving when most of the events are already over. But I'm looking forward to the floor rate. I think I'll make it for that one. Yep. Mm. That'll be awesome. I haven't been to that yet. Does, um, uh, and From all reports I hear, it's amazing. Oh, that's great. That's wicked. All right, so I mean, let let's get into um, sort of more of the blogging side of stuff. So, yeah, you know, I want to talk a little bit about creative processes and um, sort of how we come about. I know when I sit down and write a blog, I I generally have a notebook that I just write like ideas down, or if something's caught my eye, caught my mind, I just sort of write down an idea. Is that you know how do you guys go about that? Is it something that you guys also do, or is it something you plan months, uh, a year in advance? You sit down with a content calendar and go, okay, this week I'm going to write about uh, cake, and then next next week I'm going to write about, you know, like mobile phones, or like how how do you guys go about your creative processes? I think I could probably jump in on that. Uh, for the content group style of things, we have a content calendar and we run an editorial calendar, but I actually go rogue on that myself. Uh, I normally have a position when I'm up to blog, but I will come up with that blog at all random different times. So it pretty much just triggers me when I'm out and about around town or if I'm out going for a jog or a cycle, and I pretty much stop uh, 
send myself an email because that's how I remind myself to do everything uh, and then go back and go through there from the creative process. It, it mainly starts with a topic and then I, I roll out uh, from there and then deliver it sort of over sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on how in-depth I want to go. Yeah, awesome. And, and Vanessa, you've been blogging a long time. What Have yeah. you found a, uh, a, a sort of formula that works really well for you or, again, do you just sort of like, I just jump in sometimes and other times I'm real sort of methodical with it? How do you go about doing it? Yeah, I, I'm much more ad hoc now than I used to be. Um, back in 2011, I had a food allergy blog, which um, I, I ran you know, as a professional blog, and that, and I monetized that blog, and I did have um, a fairly um, well-planned calendar for, for posts for that. I used to post every day, um, but it was quite um, demanding. I did get a little bit burnt out from, from doing that, um, and I think over the last couple of years, I've really just learned that what works for me is... Um, you know, if I don't have a head full of ideas, then um, there's a problem. So I, I pretty much, you know, know what I'm what I'm going to write about during the week, but I don't really post. I don't really plan beyond that. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, and, and um, Rose, Rosemary, you run a travel blog. Yes. So do you got you guys must plan a little bit, uh, bit in advance for that sort of stuff. Well, basically, um, we write about the travels that we take during our free time because we are also working full time. And uh, the only um, system that we have is that we should at least blog at least three posts per month so that we're still current within the Twitter community and they don't think that we're half dead and we're just emerging once in a while. That's basically the system that we have. But it can be any um, time within that month as long as it's three posts. Oh, that's uh, that's a that's a sort of a, a good a uh, a good consistent pace, I guess. Uh, and so how long have you been running off that sort of three posts per month idea? I figured that out, I guess, uh, in the last year, um, because in Singapore, when we when we used to live in Singapore, there are there are a lot of blogs, um, and there are a lot of competition between the bloggers, and they have a lot of uh, awards that they award to bloggers, um, especially in the travel segment. So uh, to keep up with that space, you know, that pace, I had to do this, and that's how I discovered it. I actually just noticed that. Uh, did you guys just win an award for your blog? Yes, we just won the uh, Singapore Sky Scanner Award, and now we are in the running for the World Awards, but that will be only announced in March 24th. Oh, okay. Well, you know, congratulations on that. That's pretty. That's pretty. Uh, pretty cool to win, you know, like be featured on so many prestigious sort of uh, publications and then also follow it up with a Skyscanner Award. That's awesome. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it was a lot of hard work because 50% was based on content and 50% was based on voting. So we actually had to rally to get votes and, and that could have been a lot of annoyance to my friends as well because my Facebook page was filled with please vote, please vote, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Vote but for me, yeah. again. That's awesome. And, and Rachi, I mean, I was down at the Rumba last night and I was speaking to Lee, who's the co-owner of the Rumba. I said, mate, you know, you're really busy. You're loving it. And he goes, well, it helps when, you know, one of Canberra's best food bloggers, Rachi, is like, loves this bar. So, <laughs> I mean, how do you go about it? You know, there's a new place that opens up in Canberra and I, I swear to God, 15 minutes later, you've written a post about it. Um, that does tend to happen a little bit, but, um, I mean... I guess I've got my ears open to what's going on, and um, I do have a pretty active social life. I mean, I like I do tend to go out three three nights a week at least and do something. So um, you know, that's just con it's not just content for the blog, but it just also just helps to when I'm out and about. If I find something worthy blogging to blog about, then I will blog about it. But um, yeah, so I do I do plan a little bit ahead as well. I I like to do about three posts a week. That's my that's sort of my, what what I set out to achieve. So um, I sort of plan out for two of them, and one I just kind of let it be and see what kind of happens during the week, and you know let that be one sort of unplanned blog post. But um, yeah, three a week is what I kind of t try to stick to, and I have been able to do that for the last three months or so. Before that it used to be you know, sometimes more, sometimes less, but um, yeah, that three a week actually just works for me. So it's not too much work. Yeah. So that's really your sweet spot, you've found that sweet spot there. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it is, yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, and and uh, Gary, you know, 
every time I open Instagram, there is just a, another post of food. And I already said this before, but it always makes me hungry. How do you sit down and um, find recipes you like yourself? Uh, and then, yeah, what sort of um, stuff do you like? That sort of uh, planning and like content. Uh, in terms of blogging, it's really just a, bla a brain dump. So anything that I'm thinking about, if I want to write a post about it, it'll just happen that way. The, the way that I used to do it would be to post lots of images to Instagram and then embed the, the, uh, the Instagram uh, code in. The problem with that was that before Instagram and WordPress got together and uh, started um, uh, making the Instagram part of each image uh, more prominent, uh, it used to look pretty good. But now whenever you embed an Instagram image in the WordPress, you get all of the borders and all of the other stuff. And, uh, knowing that you can see the, the comments and the number of likes is, is nice, but then it just takes up too much space, so I've stopped doing that. Uh, for me, food has always been part of my life. I mean, being uh, Chinese, uh, I grew up just eating all the time, and when I started uh, my working life, it was just waking up in the morning and then thinking about what I was going to eat for dinner. And while I'm at work, I could be seeing patients, or I could be in the lab, or I could be doing whatever, but, you know, once or twice every half an hour or maybe every 15 minutes, I'd be thinking, what's going to be for dinner? And lately, uh, I just spend a lot of my time thinking about what I'm going to be cooking and how I'm going to photograph it. And if, uh, if it works out and it can turn into a blog post, that's fine. Otherwise, uh, what I've done recently, because I know that people do get sick of just seeing so many photographs on a blog, uh, I've just had a, a dedicated page where I just upload the images and uh, I can use those for blog posts or I can use them for other purposes and uh, use the links to them for uh, a range of other things. So yeah, really, well, yeah, blog, blogging for me, because it's just a hobby, uh, it's just a brain dump. I've got no intention to really uh, turn it into anything more than that at the moment and uh, I just like uh, I just like sharing. Well, I... I have to admit something. As soon as I wake up, I'm thinking about what's for dinner anyway. So I don't think you're alone in that boat, mate. Um, I, I, you know, I was sitting today at uh, at uni, going, oh, "How long until dinner?" But no, I, I think that was just because I was sitting in an accounting lecture, so that's okay. But uh, um, yeah, Daniel, you guys run a really big website. You know, like you know, Ozdroid is pretty big. How do you guys sort of collaborate? How many writers have you got going? Uh, and how do you um, sort of collaborate that sort of stuff and, and get it going? Got a variety of, we've got a variety of um, different um, tools we use. Um, we've got up to 16 writers, but not all of them are very active. Some of them may not have posted in a few months. Some of them actually do some work in, in the back end. Um, we use a lot of Google tools, so things like uh, Google Docs and stuff like that to collaborate on when people have actually put a post. So we get people to actually put their information and post into Google Docs first so we can actually comment them and things like that. Um, yeah. And then we... We actually are very prone to, because we are a tech site, we actually rely on things like our press releases and announcements from companies. So we essentially use a lot of RSS feeds and things like that to feed in um, from all the, the press announcements. Um, so we very much rely on that sort of stuff overnight um, during the day and stuff like that. We work in concert with a lot of the PR companies in Australia and Sydney, Melbourne and also overseas. Um, so that's really how we get our information, and then we use another tool called Todoist, um, which is a to-do app, and we basically all just feed um, information from those things, in which we find stories which we think um, are probably need to be looked at, and we can sort of then build on collaboratively from there. So um, just a couple of tools. So yeah, Todoist is our main one, which we sort of feed all of our story ideas into, and then we um, expand them out through uh, Google Docs and, and stuff like that, which gives us a lot of um, room to, to comment and, and all, like you can have up to all the 16 writers in there working on one post to sort of get something pretty large out. But we average anywhere from, um, say, one post a day, anywhere up to about 15, 20 posts a day. So there's a, certainly a lot of writing and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of um, information going on out there. So got to get to it and yeah so we basically yeah, and just I, I certainly echo Google Docs I mean I for ages was using a Samsung Chromebook and it doesn't actually have like you know you don't store anything on it and it's just all Google it's just it's a really uh, solid suite of tools that are available out there for people to use for free um, 
and it, it certainly, I, know, it, I mean, you just echoed what it, you just said exactly that. It helps you run, you know, 16 contributing riders to running a site that can sometimes push out 20 posts a day. It's an amazing set of tools for free. Well, we are actually looking at using a lot more of the, the actual Chromebooks themselves. Um, they've started implementing things like uh, they actually do offline editing a lot now. There's a common misconception that they, they really only work in the cloud, and they're actually moving a lot of stuff offline now. But we actually use them a lot, um, especially because they do a lot of word editing. Like, so all your Microsoft docs are now supported on them natively um, offline. So you can use them as well. And the big thing we find is um, that writers sort of get all these ideas and you, and even I get an idea while I'm out, like Jamie, you're out for a run and you sort of get this idea and you've got to stop quickly, you sort of add something to the doist and then by the time I get back home, uh, there's someone who's chimed in with half a dozen um, extra points that may actually help you write that post. So it, all these online tools, Google Docs and stuff like that, Todoist, Fantastic, just especially when you're dealing with a large amount of people and the collaboration is like if you're in, blogging individually, it's a bit different. But when you're dealing with that many writers, you really sort of need that sort of collaboration, and Google sort of really does offer that sort of stuff. You can get if you're not a Google fan, there, there's certainly people out there. There's a lot of other tools like uh, you can get into the Office 365, which Microsoft offers and stuff like that, which is starting to get into that. It doesn't offer as many um, collaboration sort of opportunities, and I believe um, Apple does offer some stuff with their iWork stuff. But at this stage, we've really found that Google Docs really offers the best collaboration sort of for our needs. So, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And. So, I mean, we, we've talked about like sort of creative process and stuff and how we come about getting our blog posts together and inspiration we find for our blog posts and that sort of stuff, but how do you guys go about promoting this stuff? Uh, I know that I like to use, I put, when I write a blog post, I always put it on StumbleUpon, Stupid. Um, depending on the topic, I'll throw it on Reddit if I can. I'll also sort of make a note to put it into a mailing list. So, you guys have similar processes or you just sort of put it out there, tweet about it, Facebook about it, and, you know, build it and they will come type thing? Well, I'll jump in. Um, we basically um, send all of our stuff out using a service called Deliver It. It uh, posts to all the social media sites, so Facebook, Google+, um, and Twitter, obviously. Um, we tend to find with our sort of um, market that uh, if you post it yourself to Reddit, you're going to get absolutely killed. Um, this is, it's Reddit tends to be a more of a community where you, they want natural, um, not business promoting themselves, so we wait for our readers if they find it interesting to then promote it on Reddit themselves. Um, we also, um, in the tech community, there's um, actually something called TechMeme, um, which if you follow them on Twitter, t um, at TechMeme, um, they actually promote all the number one stories that are going on in the tech industry. If you get picked up by TechMeme for a post that you find, um, information or something like that that you've written, you can find your site basically just being crashed um, from the amount of traffic that comes in. Um, you tend to find that a lot of the other tech sites then actually reference your site as the source of that um, information, which then drives a lot more traffic to your site. I mean, we've seen um, our Ausdroid featured on things like um, we've been in the New York Times and stuff like that. Um, just give an example as, as far afield as that sort of thing. So that's where we sort of, we, we do tend to rely a lot on the natural sort of people posting and sharing and things like that. So, and but it's more the way, the sort of the tech community, that that's the way you don't sort of go out there and try and really over um, <laughs> advertise your stuff, otherwise you'll get killed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Rachi, how do, you, how do you go about it? I know you post all your posts to Twitter. Is, do you do anything else with them? Um, I, I only recently just started a Facebook page for my blog, so it's only been around for less than two months. So I do post it on Facebook as well. Um, so I do push each post on Twitter, but I don't like to overdo it. So, you know, once at the most, twice for each post, that's it. Um, yeah, I, I don't like to use Twitter too much as a, like a self-promotion tool. Um, so I, and I don't, you know, I, I don't want people to see me posting my plugging my post multiple times, so um, so I kind of, yeah, that's, that's my rule. Twice is the very most for one post. Um, yeah, and Facebook once, and that's it, yeah. And, you know, if I see someone talking about uh, something that I've blogged about and, you know, they're, uh, they're asking questions about it, then, of course, I would um, sort of link my blog post to the conversation. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much the um, way I go about it. 
Mm. So uh, I actually probably, sorry James, I'll just, just jump in there. I actually I'm probably in. disagree a little bit on Rachi's point there about Twitter and only promoting a post sort of once or twice. Well, I get the, like I sort of utilise each of the different platforms quite differently. With Facebook, with Google Plus, for example, those ones I would only post once. Um, but with Twitter, I'm I'm more than happy to post something, you know, up to five, six, seven, or eight times, but posting it at different times of the day. So I'll utilise Hootsuite and promote them all in advance, so I don't have to worry about them. But I'll target the different audiences at different times of the day. So I'll look to hit the sort of morning commuters at one stage at sort of, you know, 8.30 to 9 o'clock in the morning, hit the sort of mid-morning, hit the lunchtime, the afternoon, the, more, the afternoon commute home and then around the, the dinner time and then later on as well. I actually don't mind promoting things that many times because it's so quick. Uh, I don't think people get annoyed with how much you are posting those individual pieces of content, but that's just a personal preference. I, think, and, and um, I would agree yeah. to that, sorry, Vanessa. Um, I, because the content that we can post, um, you know, can be relevant to so many people around the world, they're all awake at different time zones. So being able to use like Hootsuite or um, <coughs> or TweetDeck or something like that, the schedule you post certainly benefit. But uh, you you were going to say something, Vanessa? Uh, I was just going to say I think it's really important to promote your posts where your audience is. Um, you know, a, a lot of us bloggers obviously are on all the platforms, but our readers aren't necessarily um, engaging in social media in the same way. So, you know, um, you know, in the past, Facebook has been a really strong referral for me, even though you know it's getting increasingly hard to connection through Facebook pages now. Um, and you know, a lot of the focus of the of my um, day job and and where I'm looking to move in terms of promotion for my new blog is actually on Pinterest. So you know, I think there's a lot of other channels, um, and sometimes you just have to separate perhaps what we do as bloggers as opposed to what our, our readers where our readers are. So just just to mm. be aware of where you know where they are and where you're going to get the most bang for your buck in terms of promotion. Yeah, definitely. And it, Tara, it almost seems like um, you write a post, put it out there, and then Everybody talks about it for like the next 24 hours. So, how, how, what do you do? What do you? I mean, you have a very unique style of writing, and you cover a lot of great things in Canberra. Do you? How do you? Um, is it just you put it up on Twitter, and you know people read it and share it for you, or? Uh, I think it's a range of things. And to cover off on your early question before, I think um, building on what Rachi said about posting regularly or at least three times a week. I think mine's more closer to, to two times a week, but in a good week I can do three or four. And I think just having regular new content is what gets you more readers. My readership's really expanded since I've really concentrated on trying to post more regularly with different content. Uh, certainly Twitter is a big boost for me and uh, Facebook as well. My Facebook page, even though it's got a, a decent amount of likes, doesn't drive as much as my friend groups do, which is um, on my normal Facebook um, profile. So I'm very fortunate that I have a lot of friends who put up with me promoting my blog <laughs> regularly on my profile. Uh, but other than that, I think it's, um, it's a bit of word of mouth. I have people come into work and say that they were sitting next to someone in a cafe who was talking about something they read on in the tarot tree, and I can't ask for anything more than that. Like that, that's a great way to a great way to get um, known and for people to to go searching for you. And and one of my biggest search terms is for in the tarot tree, which is just mm. great. Do you have that's an cool. email subscriber base as well, Tara? Yeah, I um I don't manage it at all. I think with WordPress and. If this isn't really how it works, I don't know. But I think um, that WordPress, you can just sign up to be an email subscriber and every time there's a new blog post, it goes out to those people who've clicked the thing. Yeah, because it's funny, like, even though we talk about all these different social media platforms, they are great and they drive a lot of traffic, but I, I still get the feeling with a lot of my work and a lot of different clients and my you know work for play as well, email is still such a key driver and so king. Um, because mm. it hits, you know, if you've got a great email subscriber base, it hits so many email addresses and so many people are happier to open that up rather than missing a tweet or missing a Facebook post throughout a day. Mm. I think my 
If I if I I need to check, but I think it's I get maybe a new email subscriber with every post. So I don't think that's too that's bad good. odds. <laughs> that's pretty good. I, I think I've been stalled on on a particular number on my on my blog for about uh, six months. So ah. do, do a giveaway or something. But um, uh, obviously, Rosemary, your 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 content is very unique, and you, you're trying to appeal to probably you now I would say a broad variety around the world. How do you go about promoting your stuff? Um, my system is similar to Jamie's. I tweet at different intervals in the day, but um, I keep repeating even the old tweets um, over and over throughout the week as well because not everybody sees what we tweet. The timeline moves rather fast. And if you're tweeting as well, you can tweet with different hashtags and um, different people get to read them because they are looking at those hashtags. So if you keep um, circulating the same tweets over and over but at a different interval, I think it's fine. And that's how I've built my readership because of that. Most of um, my hits come from Twitter instead of Facebook. Okay. That, I mean, yeah, yeah, and I guess that's the, the best thing. I, I, it's probably sort of the bad thing and the good thing about Twitter is that it moves so quickly that you can post more often, um, but it's very easy for your post to be missed by your, your followers. Yes. Yeah. I was listening or, to a podcast uh, last night where um, I think they said that the uh, average life of a tweet is about an hour. I've actually heard it's a couple of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's not go. long regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Just depends how many people you follow, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And, and Gary, for, uh, you've yeah, already talked food, about Instagram. Uh, yeah, for food, the, um, the referrers often are things like Instagram if you've got images, but also sites like Urban Spoon and even TripAdvisor. I notice that uh, in the stats that I look at, um, Urban Spoon is a, is a pretty good uh, referrer. Uh, and I've heard just anecdotally at work and at other places, someone will look up Urban Spoon to look at a restaurant and then that's when they'll discover that I've written something about it uh, or they might see something I've written as a review on TripAdvisor and that'll lead them to the blog as well. I thought everyone was just sad on TripAdvisor. <laughs> <laughs> and and Rachel, I've seen a, I've seen a badge on, on your blog. Um, tell us a little bit about your sort of Urban Spoon. What do you rank, number three in Canberra or something for, for reviews? Yeah. That, that's just, um, yeah, the, I am ranked number three, yeah. Um, so I guess that's it. How the Urban Spoon rankings work is it's not, you don't get a point for someone clicking on your particular post on a restaurant. It's if someone goes and searches a restaurant on Urban Spoon and you happen to have blogged about it, whether you click on it or not, you mm. get, you know, your ranking goes up. Am I right in this? Or does anyone want to? Um, I think that's right. Yeah. So basically, I think you know who whoever's like if you're blogging about all the popular places, then chances are your rank um, Urban Spoon rating is going to go up. So I mean, you know, that could be a tactical move that some people could make. Just go and blog about everything that everyone wants to go to. But I mean, I, I don't, it's not something I ever look at. I, I, if I if suddenly notice, oh, that's gone up or down, I might notice it one day, you know, seven, you know, like a week or several weeks after it's actually happened. But yeah, it's kind of been that, been at that ranking for some time now, I think. But I mean, I guess I do at, do at least one Canberra restaurant review per week. So the fact that there is always fresh content in there makes a difference, and I do. Um, blog about like the new places that opened up and so something new opens up everyone wants to know about it and I do try to blog about a new place within the first couple of weeks of them opening up it's not just for the blog I mean I'm obsessed about food so I just like to go and eat the the newest thing in town so um, it just yeah that's I guess um, that's how the Urban Spoon badge is there it's just it just stays there <laughs> yeah it hasn't really moved in a long time Oh, that, I mean, that's awesome. That, that, that's awesome that you, know, that you get recognized on another site that sort of, I mean, you're creating value for people. They want to know about these places and, and you provide the, the value for them. Oops, sir. Yeah. Can I, James, pose another question to everyone while we've got the bloggers on here? Yeah, um, no problem. What sort of percentage would everyone receive from the all-powerful Google? And sort of how much emphasis do each of you place on search engine optimization? 
Daniel's probably a good one to jump in there. Well, Daniel's probably too smart for me in this category, but I'm, I'm interested in percentage-wise um, how much everyone receives from that. Yeah, um, Google is definitely one of the biggest drivers to our website. Um, we are very heavily dependent on stats and Google Analytics. Um, SEO drives a lot of um, what goes on in the tech industry. Um, so if you really are interested in getting more visitors to your websites, SEO is something you'd really so search engine option optimization. Um, it's something you really need to look at and. We find that a good, say, probably 70% of our traffic is derived from um, incoming links from Google, um, so just general searches and stuff like that. And that's where it pays to be first um, to the news, especially in the tech industry. If you're first to the news, if you've got that up there, then people will find it through Google and things like that. Um, Anything other than that, like uh, we tend to find things like Reddit is is the other killer. So if we can get something that's on Reddit and get it to the top of the list, that is another one that will kill your site in terms of traffic. So you will just get waves of traffic. And that tends to actually be a repeat traffic. So if we can get new um, visitors coming in from Reddit, uh, we tend to get them coming back again. So that's something we do strive for. But if you can get a good sort of title coming up, it's the old BuzzFeed sort of title, if you can get something that's really sort of catchy, um, you will get repeat um, from people. I mean, it's it's just one of those things, if you work a little bit harder to get, I mean, I'm terrible at writing a headline, um, but some of, some of our guys are absolutely fantastic at it and can just roll out something that you just go, oh, my God, why didn't I think of that? Um, and, and it's really, it, that's... The first start of your, of your blog is your headline, so if you can get something in Google that people are searching for um, and you're ha you happen to be hit that top of the list, you're going to get traffic. So, And one of the things we find um, actually on Ausdroid, which is a huge driver of traffic, is um, APNs, um, which is something that um, all mobile phones actually use to, to actually communicate with the different providers. Um, one of our big um, intakes is actually people looking for APNs to set up their mobile phone. They may not be looking for anything to do with Android, but they're looking at APNs, and we're one of the top searches when you look through for APNs. So it's something that was random that just has been a big driver of traffic, and we find that people often, when they're setting up a new Android phone, then stick around and keep coming back. So it's just some, one of those things that we found was, was just out of luck that, that sort of drove traffic. So, um, yeah, but Google, if you can get a good, good title on your blog it will drive traffic, especially when people search for it. And that would be something that you'd focus on quite a lot, wouldn't it, Jamie? Yeah, big time. Uh, it's, you know, a big part of planning it. Uh, a lot of people will tend to write the post and not think about keywords as part of that and titles. But, you know, I spend a fair bit of time once I'm actually publishing that post, um, just having a look at what keywords are involved, making sure the meta description's good, making sure the title fits. And as Daniel says, if you can nail the title and, you know, get some keywords that not many people are targeting, then we find, you know, for a lot of the websites we work on, our own one, uh, you know, it generally is something around 30 to 45% traffic, which is huge. Yeah, that's, uh, and, and that is, it is. I mean, SEO is a, a something that people can't ignore. Um, so, I mean, how do you go about that, uh, Rosemary? Like, you'd obviously see a fair bit of traffic, people searching for travel destinations? Yes. Um, I would say that uh, about only 40% comes from Google searches, and the rest come from Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and things like that. Um, but we have um, actually paid for an SEO um, uh, what do you call package for our WordPress site, and I think that takes care of it quite a bit because before that uh, we didn't get much traffic from Google searches. I get offered those SEO packages about ten times a day in my emails, but I generally ignore them. So it's good <laughs> to see you getting some results from them. Mm. Um, this package was actually from the uh, host itself, from the <laughs> provider, from Bluehost. So I guess it, it made a big difference for us. I'd certainly trust Bluehost a lot more than some of the emails I receive anyway. <laughs> I've just had a... Oh, sorry. sorry um, I've just had a look at my um, stats for the last month as well because I didn't really know what my percentages were. And search engines, is it far and away above everything else? And then it's Facebook, Twitter, Urban Spoon, and then... Her Canberra and then Rachi's blog. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever had a look at the search terms that your blog shows up on? Yes. Yeah. 
I have, but unfortunately, the evil Google's taken away, taken away majority of them from us. So while they're That's there, right. you should certainly have a look. It's it's certainly worth it. It's uh, yeah. a, fr a friend of mine who's a dad blogger actually uh, wrote a post recently about his wife and how she likes to dip her tea bag in her tea. And one of the he just wrote a post <laughs> about um, someone searching for tea bag my wife. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he just posted that. It was actually a really interesting, uh, <laughs> really interesting post. So, uh, in, interesting search term for your blog. So it's, it's funny if you can look at those. But look, in an ideal in an ideal volume. world, we'd still see a lot more of them. But anyway, they're getting taken away. Exactly. Yeah, we're talking about blogging. We're talking about promotions and that sort of stuff. Have you guys had any um, specific opportunities come come from blogging? Um, you know, like I, yesterday I was on a podcast for the Life of Dad Network in the states. Talking to some guys in New York for for an hour. Uh, have you guys seen uh, received anything like that? Uh, been in any conferences, offered events, anything like that? Um, when I had my food allergy blog, I um, used to get quite a lot of opportunities. Um, there's a company down in Melbourne called um, uh, oh God, I can't remember what they're called now. Anyway, they run a um, sort of blogger brand connection um, event every every month for bloggers. So you, you know, you come in and you meet the brands and they you know, showcase their products and you know you can choose if you want to take any away and write for them so that was great um, and you know it also gave me a good source of giveaways which used to be a really good um, way to increase hits to my site and you've know, also done a couple of inter you know, some interviews and things like that so you know I really enjoy that side of it. Anyone else want to jump in on that one? Well, I've probably got more. Um, we tend to um, associate a lot with the brands um, that most people know from mobile phones and tablets and things like that. So I often get invites to go to launch events um, for some of the big phones. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, work behind the scenes, so we'll talk to a lot of the, the PR companies, the engineers and stuff behind the actual devices that are coming out. So. We do a little bit of work um, behind the scenes in under NDA, so non-disclosure agreements. So we can't talk about a lot of things until a certain date, um, and that's pretty cool. I mean, you, you essentially get a lot of the chances to actually get hands-on with products before anyone else does. Um, you get to review them and have that ready to go once um, they actually launch. Um, one of the cool things is you, you basically get into a room and some of those, you maybe sort of have 15 people from the company sitting in front of you and you're just sitting there telling them what's wrong with their product and they're all just busily writing it down and then the next iteration comes along and you see some of these things have been fixed. It's like, wow, they listened. So some, some stuff like that, getting access to the products, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, <laughs> for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I mean, Tara, like we just we spoke about Enlighten uh, before, and you obviously uh, people obviously respect your opinion and respect your blog. How um, you get invited to quite a few things, so you know, tell us about some of the stuff that you've been able to get involved in. Yeah, uh, I got invited to things a long time before I started accepting advi invites to things, and I was with Rachi when I was first discussing. Um, something I really wanted to attend that I'd been invited to, um, which I would have gone to anyway, uh, but I, at the time I, I didn't know if I should be accepting it. I knew that the, the lunch would be free. It was at, at Jamie's Italian. And uh, at, to, to deal with that, I guess I wrote um, a bit of a, a post about what I will and won't accept and, and why I do it and that I, I make it quite clear when I haven't paid for something so that people can make their own opinion or their own judgment if they think I'm biased. Yeah. Um, but having those opportunities um, can be really special and can open up um, some things that I might not necessarily have um, really wanted to go to but have been vaguely interested in like a, um, the Deviator event I went to at Enlighten. I thought I don't really know what that is. I'm interested in it, but I'm not sure if I'd go to it. Um, and then when I went to it, I thought that's actually something I'd really pay for, and I'm really excited to write about that for other people. So having those opportunities, I think, through blogging and accepting invites has been a good thing for me, but um, I'm pretty clear, as are other bloggers like Rachi, about um, making it obvious when I've got something for free. Yeah, I think that's important. I think. Um 
you know, telling people like this is a sponsored post or I've been given this product to review for you or something like that. It, it just sort of, uh, I, I don't know, I feel, I feel like I'm cheating the system if I don't say that I've been paid for this post or something like that. We also tend to um, try and give the, the product away. So if we're given a phone or a tablet or something like that, um, we'll also then give it away rather than keep it. So there's no real sort of, oh, you're just getting a tablet, so you're giving them a good review or something like that. So we well, try not to, to that, keep Daniel, it. Otherwise, you'd have a cupboard full of tablets or phones, wouldn't you? Say, you've obviously been Don't. given two things in the past. Do not talk to my wife. I've actually got too many, <laughs> but I've actually bought them also. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but yeah, it's it's one of those things. Like as you said, you've really got to be careful about um, accepting stuff, and and you've really got to be clear about whether you um, whether you've accepted payment or if you accept a trip somewhere if they've paid for it, like your company's paid for it. You've really got to be careful, and people will call you on it. So if they they see you or think you, you you're being paid for something, they'll call you on it. And yeah, so yeah, it's better to just be upfront and honest about it. So yeah. There's a bit of pressure also that goes with accepting, um, you know, free products and services. You know, sometimes you might feel a bit beholden to write about them, and then when you're in the process of writing about them, realise you don't really want to. So, you know, I've always been really careful to make sure that the things that I accept are the things that I actually, you know, believe in and am happy to endorse. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a lot of people out there who take sponsored posts just because it's a dollar. Yeah. While we're but talking about those, having, having said that, though, sorry, is you know, costs need to be covered. You know, it, this isn't free. You know, blogging isn't free. So, you know, um, you know, I certainly have done a few sponsored posts to to pay for the costs. Um, but I'll always disclose it. Yeah, that's. I think that's very important. You know, f full and absolute disclosure is very important. Like, I don't like to hide my disclosure statement at the end of a post and you know I if I'm going to do a sponsored post like it will be something that's an absolute fit for my blog I don't you know I don't veer from something just because I think oh okay it's um this you know I'll do this even though it's not something I really you know that I would normally go to or would normally pay money to do so like yeah. like the um lunch at Jamie's Italian that Tara brought up, I think we both went because we both knew we would have gone either way, you know, we would have paid our own money and gone, so here was an opportunity, so it was just one of those things that um, if you're going to do it, then if you're already planning on doing it, then there's, you know, and then you're going to disclose it, so it's, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's how I look at it. Yeah. You know, in some ways, I, I wonder about the difference, Rachi, with, um, with you and, and Tara being invited to something like that and a journalist from the Canberra Times being invited to, to the same event, you know, mm. the sense of the scrutiny isn't placed on journalists, that is placed on bloggers. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a bit of a discrepancy there. Yeah, I mean, every time they re do a restaurant review, obviously, you know, it's they don't have to disclose that they yeah. got this for free and that for free, but we do, but I guess that's, that's a... Price you yeah. have to pay for not having a journalist degree, <laughs> but yeah. and being able to write exactly what you want and not having to write what someone tells you to write. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Just lastly, James, while we're talking about those experiences um, that people have had, has everyone seen the new uh, 101 Humans campaign that's come out? And I imagine that quite a few people within this conversation and people probably listening as well, being bloggers and social media sort of. Gurus uh, are probably having a look at that and thinking that there are some pretty good ultimate experiences to come in there. Has everyone had a look at that? Will people that be applying? I'm sorry. You need to disclose anything from that comment there. Absolutely not. I, I actually have nothing to do with the campaign myself, uh, and I've actually submitted my application today. Yeah, I uh, submitted my application when I saw it come up. So, anyone else done it? Yeah. I haven't yet, but I'm I'm stuck on who to in, who are my people to invite. <laughs> that was probably the hardest part for me. I imagine surely Gary's going to uh, have an application in there for the the food opportunities that are out there and the ability to be able to talk about those. I imagine you'd probably be one of the guys that would suit it very well, Gary. I I thought about it, but I haven't put in an application. I don't know what I'm going to be doing in October, um, and uh, like like Tara, I have no idea who I'd invite. I stared at the screen for about five minutes going, because I, I chose a family one with my daughters, and I was like, I don't know another family interstate with kids. Um, oh, well, I'll, I'll pick someone. 
So yeah. I ended up picking some random family I haven't seen in a long time. But, uh, I mean, so we've talked about opportunities and stuff, and, you know, we talked briefly about tools, and it is it is just ticked over the hour mark. So I think we might just jump into a few questions, and I've got um, uh, f five questions have popped up tonight. Uh, first of all, I want to sort of kick this one over to to Gary, Tara, and Ratchy especially, uh, and, and Rosemary, feel, uh, feel free to chime in on this one. This one's from at Camera Foodie, so I don't know if you guys watched last week. Um, Elias came out and re the big reveal that he is Canberra Foodie. Um, so he he tweeted earlier, what photo gear and apps do you recommend for someone who wants to take photos? Uh, if I can jump in on an iPhone, uh, on an iPhone, I tend to use uh, Camera Pro and I'll modify things using Adobe uh, uh, PS Express. Uh, I'll at, lately, I've been watermarking with the Watermark app. If I take an image with a uh, digital SLR or with a, a compact um, digital that can shoot RAW, I'll do the processing in Lightroom and then uh, and then drop it in a Dropbox uh, and then transfer it from Dropbox into Instagram, and that's the way I, I tend to do it. It's probably going to take you longer than the cooking. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting a lot better at it, and there are so many presets in Lightroom that it's just easy. I, I get lazy sometimes and just hit auto, and the image looks better. Yeah. And I know, Ratchy, you you uh, use Lightroom. Julie was uh, telling us last week that you use Lightroom. Yeah, so I shoot everything on my um, DSLR with my 50mm lens. That's what I use for all my food photos. Um, and I use Lightroom for editing. I find it really user-friendly and easy. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much the only thing I use. I don't use Photoshop at all. It's all Lightroom. Um, I use on. Um, I don't use my iPhone photos for blog posts anymore, but um, I do use an app called, what is it called? Um, Photo Toaster. Is what I use for editing my iPhone photos. Um, that's got quite a nice set, few settings, and you can you know adjust a lot of things in that. But, um, yeah, they're, they're my only tools. And, and Tara, we, you know, uh, I think it was last year or, or January, we went to the, the CBR tweet up and saw mm. you taking some photos. What, uh, what sort of tools do you use for that? Uh, so I use a DSLR Canon as well, and um, it's a 30mm lens rather than a 50mm lens. Uh, and I use Photoshop and... Uh, like Rachi, I shoot in RAW, so uh, that seems to help a great deal rather than the, um, all the other Photoshop tools that you can download. RAW seems to make the most difference of anything. It, it does take up more space on your computer, but it, I think it's worth it. And um, otherwise, I use my Samsung. Uh, and I think the photo quality can vary on a Samsung um, I've got a Galaxy 3, so I use Pixlr Express to edit any um, phone photos, but sometimes I just can't be bothered, particularly with trolley photos. <laughs> <laughs> and and Rose, Rosemary, I, I, you know, you travel to some amazing places. Do you guys use any specific tools, any specific cameras? Um, yes. Uh, for my camera, actually, I, I sold my DSLR two years ago because I found it too cumbersome to travel with it and change large lenses on the go. I now use a Sony Nex 5N. Um, you can take pictures in RAW um, as well, but I don't. I take them in JPEG fine. And I use Corel Paint Shop to do my editing. And for phone apps, I use Snapseed. Snapseed's cool. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, and we ha we had another question from um, Tara. I, I saw them tweet you also about your your hair color today. Um, at A L T N Y U L A S Z I, they mm -hmm. sort of they asked what keeps you motivated and who's your favorite blogger. That was to everyone, not just Tara, by the way. <laughs> I've already answered the hair question. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Uh, well, so, I can start. Yeah, go, go for it. Uh, so the first part of the question, what keeps me motivated? Uh, Canberra. 
I know that's simplistic, but there's so much to do in Canberra and all you have to do is, is visit something like Visit Canberra or, or look at another blog or look at my blog or uh, and see all the different things there are to do. Uh, there's, I really think there's something for everyone in Canberra and even when there's not something going on like an exhibition or the Balloon Spectacular or Enlighten, there's so much that you can just go do outside or, or, or go to the Parliamentary Triangle or, or go to any one of our uh, our bars and cafes for an experience and that's what motivates me. I, I feel like my list of things is never, the more I do, the more it seems to grow, the things I want to do rather than shorten. Uh, and that's what motivates me. And I forget the second part of the question. Uh, who's your favourite blogger? Ah, good question. I don't know. I've got a, a lot that I follow for a, a range of different reasons. Um, and uh, I'm sure Rachi will laugh at this, but Rachi's probably the blog that I read most regularly and, and, and go to. Um, but she and I also try to stop each other from reading each other's posts sometimes because we know we're about to blog about the same thing uh, and we don't want to be influenced by each other's opinions. So that can be really hard because um, I really respect Rachi's opinion and, and love seeing her photos. So particularly when we go to the same event, it's uh, hard to black myself out from looking at her blog. Uh, I also really uh, love Gary's blog. Gary uh, has been a big supporter of mine from the beginning and uh, I think Gary's got it nailed in terms of um, simple but effective posts that people like to read. Uh, Gary, I, I write posts that are more than a thousand words and, and Gary seems to know how to get it um, succinct and concise uh, while still having the right images to get you inspired and I love that. That's awesome. And, and Vanessa, you've been blogging, you know, like on your blog you say you've been blogging since 98. Yes. I was, te I was 10 years old in 1998. I got my oh, thanks. Time. Where do you feel old? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what, what keeps you motivated? What's keeping you motivated all this time? Uh, you, you know, a large part of it is the writing. I love writing. Um, but also, I just, I love the blogging, 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 blogging community. I love um, going to conferences. I love meeting up with other bloggers. Um, you know, bloggers are such positive people and um, and you know, so talented and reading everybody else's work just always keeps me inspired. So you know, I think I can't imagine a life without a blog. So um, and I've had lots. So um, yeah, I, I just I love blogging. Uh, that's awesome. And you're going to the Pro Blogger event up on the Gold Coast, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, really looking forward to that. That'll be that'll and be cool. One of, one of the guys I really I, I wish I was going. Pat Flynn's going this year. And yes, he's, he's yeah. one of my favourites for sure. Yeah. Um, but also, um, shout out to a couple of other Canberra bloggers, um, Shari from Good Food Week, who of course was on the cover of the Good Food Guide yesterday from Canberra Times. Yep. Um, and to Emma and Carla who write uh, Merry Maker Sisters, they've got a great paleo blog, I love their blog too. Ah, that's awesome, that's awesome. Um, and Megan, who was on last week, asked, uh, how did you discover your niche? Uh, and I think, you know, that one can apply to everyone. Um, so who, who wants to jump in on that one? Can't survive without food. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. And you're also thinking about dinner, so you're just trying to solve that problem. Exactly. Oh, awesome, awesome. Jamie, how did you, how did you find your NRL, your NRL niche? Uh, basically, um, I was sporty as a kid. Uh, but a nerd on the inside, really. So I, I hung out with the jocks at school, but I was really just an inner nerd. So by the time things came to actually play in sport, once I finished school, I decided that I was a lot better with numbers. Oh, I see the Broncos are coming up down there. And I also noticed that Gary has a, a Queenslander jersey in his profile picture, but we won't hold yeah. that against him. Um, so, <laughs> oh, yeah, look, it, it just sort of came a bit of a, as a natural progression. And the guys that I actually run the website with, are guys that I met on the internet as well, uh, and a couple of them I haven't even met, and we run this website, you know, for that sort of brings in a couple of thousand dollars a year, and uh, you know, it was a bit literally all through the internet. It's it's amazing. I um, 
I spoke to uh, the guys I did the podcast yesterday, and I spoke to them, and I said, you know, none of my friends have uh, have kids, and I started dad blogging, and it was just literally so I can meet other dads um, without having to leave my home because my kids are just the devil. So I mean, that was sort of my motivation behind it, and it sort of keeps me going, and and that's sort of how I found out my niche. But Daniel, how did you fall into talking about Android? Is it you know you've always been passionate, sort of you know you like stuff iOS, we don't like iOS, and we'll, we'll roll with Google instead. No, um, yeah, I, I just have never really felt. Uh, I've got uh, sort of issues with uh, the way Apple runs their their sort of tech, um, sort of the way they gate everything, uh, the walled community that they sort of run, and uh, I prefer to um, tinker with a lot of um, things. So I, I sort of get into that side of things, and that's the way I sort of came to Ozdroid. Um, I was actually talking with the the founder of our site um, through Whirlpool. And we sort of all got together, and there was only a real core of people who first got the HTC Dream back when it launched on Optus five years ago, which was the first Android phone in Australia. And and we sort of all just sort of started talking together, and eventually it all got to the point where he started this uh, website for that was Australian specific, as more devices sort of came out in Australia, and and there wasn't really much information. A lot of the big tech sites weren't covering Android or, or any sort of releases and stuff like that, and there was a real need for it. So we sort of just jumped in. Um, I came on board about a year after he started the blog and uh, he actually went away to do his year 12 exams and on to uni and I've sort of now come up to sort of the editor so I took over. <laughs> so that's sort of how I sort of came on board and we just talk about tech. That, that, I mean, that's an awesome story and I mean Rosemary did you just like travelling and you thought hey let's just talk about our travels? No. Um, when I moved to Indonesia I couldn't get a job and um, uh, I used to be an aerospace and defense journalist when I was before marriage and I couldn't do that in Indonesia so I just filled my time by opening a blog which I called Scribbles of an Electronic Gypsy and I wrote about everything and anything but I eventually realized that uh, people were basically reading travel posts more than anything else on my blog so I decided that um, I would just focus on travel since everybody's interested in that instead of what I write about my recipes or my opinions so I just stuck to travel after that. That That's all, that's awesome man, it just sort of, sort of, you just sort of fell into it which is really yeah. cool. Um, another question we had was from Sean from Capital Yarn, uh, Yarns last, last week. Uh, I gave him the challenge to talk about Old Parliament House, Lake Billy Griffin and uh, Rosebush. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys saw that story but it's a little creepy and Sean if you're still watching uh, I don't know how you came up with that, but you know, well done for that one. He's asked, wondering if any of the bloggers have a word limit they set themselves per blog. No, I I never set myself a limit. I just write as much as I need to write on a certain topic, and if it looks way too long, then I might go back and edit it. But generally, I I don't like to restrict myself, so I just write everything that I need to get out and then if it doesn't look too long I post it and I like to break it up with lots of photos as well um, I think that's important if it's all words I think you know it can scare people if you, if you see a thousand words and no photos but um, yeah that's that's just the way I do it I don't ever think oh, you know, better make this a 500 word post so, yeah Jamie uh, you were speaking about SEO before uh, and Daniel you can weigh in on this one uh, I understand that SEO is sort of best around the, over the 300 mark, am I correct? Uh, look, I actually don't know if there are any limits and, and also to be fair, I, I can't really keep up with the smart guys at Google and how all of their algorithms work. Uh, I tend to write a lot more detailed blog posts when I write, um, but that's just because I, I like to go into detail and I tend to get in a lot more trouble with, with others that I write with for writing too long. Uh, but again, look, I, I don't really restrict myself too much, but uh, probably around about the, the thousand word mark, I won't go too much over that. Um, but I don't, again, I don't really have a limit as such. And I should just mention as well, I only actually came across Capital Yarns for the first time last week talking about it through a mutual friend and I think he does a terrific job and, and I've read a couple of them the first time but haven't read the Rosebush one just yet so I'll get on and check that one out a little bit later on. 
Yeah, um, the 300 word word limit. It's it's sort of like a it changes. Uh, it's more to do with uh, things like when people talk about that limit. It's actually talking about things like Google News and stuff like that getting registered on there, which they sort of have minimum word limits. But if you're talking about blogging for SEO, it's basically just a, a good comprehensive um, description. So they tend to get links in and out. Um, so if people are linking to your site and and stuff like that, it, it tends to get higher SEO. But it's a it's a constantly changing sort of thing. If you if you're really interested in it, um, you can sort of follow Matt Cuts from Google, um, and he'll sort yeah. of blog about things like that. And and he's really good and about um, explaining things in the really sort of basics. Um, in terms of word limits, I actually set my writers a minimum um, word limit rather than a maximum. Um, we basically go for a hundred words minimum because sometimes something will happen. It's not that big a deal, but you want to sort of post it, but you sort of don't want to just say, this happened, X. So you sort of want to do that. Um, with some of my reviews, I, I know that one of my um, one of the manufacturers has one person designated to read my posts, so I tend to go as hard as I can. Um, I think my record was about 8,500 words, um, and he hates me, so... <laughs> I, I, t I tend to go for that. <laughs> it's just 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 to sort of irritate him. Um, yeah, I, I sort of won't do it if I don't like the product. But <laughs> if, if I if I sort of am getting into it, I will actually really go hard and go for it. So, yeah. But yeah, word limits. Do what you want. Yeah. Does uh, I, Sean's just actually popped up on Google Plus there and said, uh, you know, glad I creeped you out. Uh, <laughs> you did, Sean. Um, so people, if you if you're following along, that's uh, capitalyarns.com.au for Sean. But uh, has anyone anyone else stick to word limits, minimum, maximum? Do they sort of just, or they just write as they write? I always, as I said before, I always tell myself, this time you're not going to go over 500 words, but it's I just find it impossible. And I think captions of photos all add to word limits. Maybe I'm, uh, or, or word count, maybe I'm making excuses for myself, but uh, I always bust the 1,000 words. Um, but Raj is right, that breaking it up with photos is the key, I think, as long as you've got um, things that can uh, keep people's interest while they're, they're reading your opinion, uh, you're, you're bound to keep your readers. Yeah, yeah I 100% I agree. I had to write a blog post today for uni and it was 200 words, 10% either side, and it's like, read an entire chapter and write 200 words on the chapter. And I said, wow. I'm sitting there, delete, 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 delete. Oh, it doesn't make sense now, I give up. So I walked away. Um, now we had another one from the forage at the for, the, the forage forage eat the inaugural forage eat I believe is happening. They asked ideas for the food vendors for the inaugural forage on the twelfth of April in New Acton. So foodie bloggers. Um, well, Fruity, of course. Sorry, what's that? Fruity. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they've, you know, you would think they've got, already got Fuji on board. Um, you'd want one of the coffee people like Ona on board, I guess. Um, yeah, well, who else? Um, as long as there's Goslin there, I'm happy. <laughs> or the Broad Van. I've got to get me a Broad Burger. Well, cake, the Cake Club might be having a stall there, so, you know, that, that could be... Yes, <laughs> so... Um, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not here that weekend, so I have to organise it if I'm going to go. So, um, yeah. So, but it might be happening. Um, yeah. Well, who else? Um, places like Dream Cuisine, that sort of. Yeah, maybe cool. someone like Honey Delight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, she get she got she got a place or a, a win at the Royal Show. That's right. Yeah, I think she won a medal of some sort. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then we had a, a question from Kylie, and I actually met Kylie last night down the Rum Bar. Uh, the Rum Bar is a great place. If if I know Rachi, you obviously obviously like it down there. Um, and a little bit. <laughs> yeah, my favourite drink's the the Sailor's Fury. But uh, the first time I went down there, it, I, I'd had a few beers and it tasted really good. The second time I was down there, I was sober and it tastes like rocket fuel. But it's really <laughs> tasty. Um, Kylie, Kylie's asked. Most memorable learning curve in regards to blogging. Mm. Um, 
It's got to be when something's gone wrong, really. I mean, <laughs> when 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 you you know try and rush a post too quickly, and you know you get a fact in there wrong or you spell something particularly bad, there's just that feeling of trying to jump into WordPress as quickly as possible to fix that up before anyone notices. I've got a good one. Um, backup, having lost a whole blog worth of content because I did not back it up. And I know so many bloggers who don't properly back up, back up their blogs and, um, yeah, make sure you always back up everything with a really good plugin. I use uh, a plugin to Dropbox and every Thursday it backs up. This is back in the dark ages, James. Oh, well, sorry. Vanessa, Vanessa, there's also a, a time travel website called Wayback where you can actually, where Google actually crawls web pages and sometimes you might even be able to go back and find an old website that was there at the time. Oh, cool. Okay. So check it out. I think it's like wayback.org or something. Yeah. Okay. You might be able to find that lost blog. You never know. Uh, I've got heaps of them. I'm, I'm like one of these people that just, you know, like as soon as I'm done with it, I, I used to just delete everything and I so regret it now. Oh, I, think it's, I think it's thewayback.org. The way back. Okay. Yeah, I've just Googled it and Google redirected me, so... But yeah, so all right. Um, look, I think that's so. You know, we we've now gone nearly an hour and a half, and it's it sort of flown. I don't know how you guys have found it. Whether you've been able to put up with my annoying voice or anything like that. Um, well, you've you've had about a bottle and a half of wine. I've noticed that's been pouring a few times. Uh, yeah, no, I've, I, uh, it's a Lincoln Estate. Uh, <laughs> I was I went to Port Lincoln for a honeymoon. Um, Were you paid uh, for this product placement? <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure: I'm not getting paid. Um, <laughs> Wait, can uh, I do a product? Any, anything else you want to add to the conversation before we uh, we kick this bad boy off? Yes, One I more do. Yeah, yeah, go I'm, for it. I've got a product placement. So <laughs> you may have seen that I've looked like I've been doing something. So I've been cutting out um, little take-home links to Belcon and Town. <laughs> Sorry. I saw you with the Paris's before. I was like, what is she doing? <laughs> They're totally rusted. They're, they've been very hard to use. So, but if I was grimacing, that's why. Um, but so the, we're doing uh, a, a survey on the Belconnen Town Centre. The Town Centre Master Plan is being updated this year. So this is the community's opportunity to have their say on what they want to see changed or different in the Belconnen Town Centre. Uh, there's lots of opinions about it, and now it's time to tell someone who's listening and that's the Belconnen Community Council. So you can um, find the link on our Facebook page or I, I'm happy to share it again on Twitter. And Actually, I'm sure I'm going to be sharing it every day. You're the deputy chair? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So can people get involved in that or is it a yearly thing that they need to nominate for or how do they get involved with the Community Council? Uh, community Council meetings are once a month. They're on the ch third Tuesday of every month at the Belconnen Library in the upstairs room, the community room. And uh, the AGM's usually in October or November, and, and that's when um, people can vote for the uh, the positions like chair and deputy chair and secretary and committee members. Um, but our biggest uh, agenda item this year is obviously on the Belcon and Town Centre Master Plan. Cool. And how, how did that go at the last AGM? How did what go? Uh, well, you guys were you guys were talking about getting everyone down there for the the. The master plan. How did the how, how's the master plan unfolding? Uh, so the master, there's been a Belconnen master plan ever since Belconnen was first slated. So back in the 1960s, and they update it sort of every decade. Um, so it, it's it's not a necessarily an item that's discussed at the AGM, but it, it's something that um, we try to help influence with government or help facilitate community opinion um, so that we get it right. A lot of people. Um, have said that the the growth of tall buildings in the Belcon and Town Centre has been because there's been no updated master plan that that governed the heights. Um, so if you've got an opinion, whether it's about trolleys or parking or how much you love Lake Ginandera, um, please get involved and and let us know your thoughts. That's heaps about Belcon and sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Rosemary, did I see see right that you were tweeting about a place to live? Are you still looking for a place to live? Yeah, I'm trying to find uh, which suburb would be good for us to use bus services because we won't be buying a car immediately. 
<laughs> yes, and uh, Rachi wrote an email to me giving me uh, some advice as, as well. And she did say that Balconan is, is quite all right if you're looking for bus services, if I'm not mistaken. I'm um, in Bruce. I'm in Bruce, and we even beat Balconan because we're the, the first, the last sort of suburb through. So Bruce, I would vouch for. But um, does Bruce have um, frequent bus services? Depends how close you are to the main road, but yes, it does if you're close to the main road. And where exactly is Chandler Street? Oh, I know where Chandler Street is. Is that a walking distance? It's got a trolley on it. Um, <laughs> is that a walking distance to the mall and to the bus depot? Yeah, Chandler Street links directly to the mall and to the bus station, directly. Depending on which tall building you are, you could probably jump to the bus depot. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's right. You could create a slide from your window. <laughs> I was looking at the altitude apartment. I'm not sure whether it'll be available when we arrive, but they do have a lot of apartments vacant there right now. Mm -hmm. There you go. And, and this is what the uh, the Canberra chat is all about: is taking people who live in Malaysia and finding them accommodation. <laughs> yes. Uh, Vanessa, why don't you give Canberra 101 a bit of a plug before we say goodbye? Um, oh, well, I'm putting on the spot now. Uh, well, you know, it's only a new blog. I've only launched it just on Monday, and um, some of the posts on it go back and back to um, the school holidays in January. So uh, I'm going to be writing a, a lot. I'm going to be dragging my kids all over Canberra. They're so excited. Not really, but they're going to be. Um, and uh, and really trying to give a really great picture about what it's like to, um, you know, to live in Canberra as a as a family and the things that we can do and um, how exciting it is and I also want to try and um, you know feature a bit of some local producers as well and perhaps um, dabble a little bit in um, some some recipes based on some of the some of the products that I can uh, can source in the Canberra region so really looking forward to it really excited about it. Well, if anyone from a, a different winery wants me to plug their product for the next uh, Canberra chat, send me a bottle of wine and um, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> Um, Gary, do you want to uh, give us a little bit of a little bit of something? Uh, got any recipes lined up for this week? Uh, well, this weekend I'm going to Brisbane to see my daughters. I've got three daughters too, so uh -huh. uh, I'm looking forward to going out with them and celebrating a, a birthday of the youngest daughter. I've now got three teenagers. Oh, I'll be coming to you advice for advice, mate. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and, and Daniel Osdroid, uh, have you got anything big in the pipeline? Um, we've got uh, a couple of new launches coming up. Uh, we'll be covering the HTC One launch event on the 25th of March. Um, we'll also be covering the Australian launch um, of the Galaxy S5 um, in Sydney. So basically we've got a few big things. We're always reviewing stuff. We're open to mainly um, featuring Australian sort of applications and services. So if anyone in Canberra has any sort of Android apps that they'd like to plug or gets a bit of coverage on, send us an email and just jump on osdroid.net and get onto the contact section. We'd love to hear from you. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Jamie from the content group, what have you guys got in the pipeline? I know you did your live webcast. Was it last week, the week before? David Pembroke had a couple of guys on there. Have you got another one coming up? It was a couple of weeks ago now. I think it was the 27th was the last one. So we've actually got one next Thursday. So it's going to be about content marketing for government. Uh, and so we're just finalising the people that are going to be on that panel. But it should be very, very interesting. So 12.30pm next Thursday. We'll be live again from the Gunga from the Library. Garland Digital Hub. Exactly right. Top spot up there. I went up there to do some live tweeting for it last week. Uh, I'll be doing it from the office this time around. But it was a, a top setup out there, and and really really well done that digital hub out of the library. Yeah, Gavin Gavin Tap. Uh, I've been talking to a fair a fair bit, and then, uh, ooh, I'm going to get together hit with him and talk about this sort of stuff, and we we might try and do some more stuff for the the CBR chat stuff, but. Uh, uh, and, and Rachi, you know, I hope you feel better. Have you got anything, you. Uh, big reviews coming up? Um, no, not really. Um, I think this weekend there's um, Art Not Apart in um, New Acton, yep. bit of a festival. Um, so I'm going to probably go check that out on Saturday. So if anyone's, you know, haven't heard of it, there's something to do this weekend. Um, yeah, other than that, um, yeah, not, not, well, we've got cake up next weekend. Some hey. of you might be there, Vanessa. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I know I'm going. Oh, I think I'm going. You are coming. You're a guest. So, um, uh, yes. Yes. Excellent. And, and I you're just want to, um, this time. Yeah, well, I'm uh, not. I, you know, I hope I can get along to are cake. You? 
I'm going to actually get to eat some. Well, you missed out last time, um, James, um, so <sighs> I know. This, should, this is cocktail theme, so you know, it should be good. Oh, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and I just want to sort of uh, give a quick plug. I know that uh, Richard Tuffin and I have been trying to tee up uh, a foodie blogger or just a bloggers get together on the 4th of April to celebrate the end of Daylight Savings at the Rum Bar. So if you, even if you're not a blogger and you just like drinking rum or cocktails, hello Tara's dog, uh, <laughs> please just come along. It'd be great to meet you. I know I've already met uh, Kylie down there uh, and I tend to be hovering around there like a bad smell. So it'd be great. Thanks guys very much for joining me again. Tara from In the Territory, Rose, Mary from Travel and Beyond, Jamie from the Content Group, Vanessa from Canberra 101, Gary from Yummy Lummy, Daniel from Austroid, Rachi from Le Bon Devon. Uh, and yeah, it, it's been great to have you guys. Thanks very much. Thanks, James. Thank you, James. It's been fun. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thanks, guys. And uh, if uh, I'll put a couple of links up there for to answer some of the questions regarding apps and stuff on the Google Plus page. So uh, if you're interested in some of the apps that people have talked about tonight, I'll whack them up there and you can check them out. Excellent. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Good night. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.